everyone, and welcome back to the Almost Sideways Sideshow. Uh, I am your host, Terry Plucknett, and joining me is Adam Daly, as we are deep diving what uh, IMDb says is the third greatest TV show of all time. Thank you guys for uh, listening to the first four episodes that have come out. And uh, those that have been listening to the podcast, thank you. Those have, that have been catching us on YouTube, thank you uh, for that. Adam, tell them all about YouTube stuff. Yeah, YouTube, we have a lot of fun stuff coming, not just these reactions and reviews in video form, but we have some awesome, I um, just posted a Jurassic Park, a journey with Spielberg leading up to West Side Story. So some more, more Spielberg content is coming. Uh, like I said, Jurassic Park just got dropped this last week. I'm recording Raiders of the Lost Ark. This upcoming week, we have a Space Jam, Space Jam retro review, Space Jam Two, all that fun stuff coming. And I'm also looking at Jaws as and Shaun of the Dead too. Edgar Wright's journey is also coming. So a lot of fun, deep dive conversation with guests coming up very soon. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification bell, the bell icon for notifications when we post other videos to stay up to date. So anyway, yeah, perfect. Really appreciate all your support. Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, let's uh, let's hop into episode five here, uh, which is an episode really unlike any other episode in the series. Yeah, definitely. Uh, where it takes a, a little bit of a turn and and really is more of a retrospective episode as it's told really through flashbacks and everything is told from the point of view of Winters. Yeah. Uh, one significant thing to mention up top about this episode is this is the one episode directed by Tom Hanks. Um, and... Uh, and he does actually have a really, really small cameo. Uh, he's yeah. one of the he's one of the red berets in the back of like the crowd scene at the end, but you can't really see him. Uh, but yeah, this is this is an episode all about winters. And the main thing that it talks about is how he has been promoted. He is no longer mm -hmm. in charge of Easy Company. He is now uh, heading up the battalion, and we are looking at him writing a report. On really his last, uh, his last mission as the leader of Easy Company, as he uh, does this raid on these crossroads, and there there are some really interesting scenes that pop up in in this, whether it's through the battle or through uh, just his eyes as he's remembering back to this. Um, Adam, I'm gonna go to you first. What were some of the scenes that really stood out to you and and resonated with you in this episode? I think the visual style of the direction is <coughs> actually considerably different than anything we hadn't seen, uh, to my recollection, up to this point, any flashback sequences. So having that kind of be told as like a story or as a memory is a very uh, unique way to take the change up the kind of style of the storytelling. And I actually really. Uh, resonated with that i actually liked it well i totally forgot that it was tom hanks directing it until i was reminded when i looked was taking looking at the notes type of thing uh, i thought he did actually a really good job directing this i think some of my favorite sequences is when he is uh you can see there's a lot of uh, little moments of inside these uh these these uh, what are they foxholes type of thing foxholes mm -hmm. and uh trying to before they go out and do these big charge and one of the one moment that I will remember is Winters like just leading, like running full bore by himself, going out to, before, and then he gets to that up the hill, and then like the red, he's like wait for the red smoke, and the red smoke happened, and they all uh, ran out after him as well. Uh, so it's a little further on in the episode, of course, but that's one. It's moment. such a great like, moment, though. It's such, it's such a great so moment. Awesome, yeah. And, and well, and, and he outside. relives that <clears throat> moment over and over and over again because I mean, that's where yeah. I mean, he, he's got that PTSD that yeah, that, that pulling that trigger on that kid who didn't even see that him kid, coming, yeah. had no gun. Um, and and yeah. I just have to shout out LVP of the episode is definitely Lieutenant Peacock. Who is the one that uh, everyone hears the canister with the red smoke go off, but the red smoke doesn't come out right away and everyone starts to move and he's like, no, no, we need to wait for the signal and just leaves Winters hanging there. And just like some superhuman beast, he is up there just gunning down an entire battalion of German soldiers. And uh, yeah, it, it's awesome. But yeah, come on. He didn't even offer him a cigarette. He was just mowing him down. Yeah, just exactly. Just, just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was one so, of your favorite moments? 
Um, so, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. When, when, once you get to that raid, I love, once again, we talked about it in some of the other episodes, but how this shows uh, just how brilliant of a leader Winters is. Yeah. And um, and he is definitely a um, a follow me leader and not a you go do this, you go do that leader. And um, and you get you get the idea by the end of the episode that there is that um, there there's like this perfect foil to Winters that starts to emerge as the as the head of Easy Company because Winters leaves, Moose Heiliger takes over. And uh, and then he's he's wounded and has to has to be taken off by friendly fire. Uh, there there's so many just random little moments here of people getting wounded yeah. that is completely avoidable. Um, but then we have Lieutenant Dyke take over, and wow. I mean we'll get I, we'll get more to Lieutenant Dyke later. But Next episode, it's just yeah. it's just funny how you get how you get so much uh, this pair these parallels of look at what Winners does, look at what Dyke does. And Winters is definitely a follow me. I'm going to lead the way. And Dyke is a you go do that. I'll stand behind you. This show is brilliant at showing uh, what kind. It's like what kind of leader are you in life? Like it, it, watch Banner Brothers and figure out who you are in the show, leader wise. And that's uh, you have a good idea. It's like a, it's like a personality test type of thing. Like one of those uh, which character are you in Banner Brothers? And it's like a, a leadership uh, test and. Depending on what leader you get, you might you might be hated for because uh, there are some really uh, interesting elite leadership styles in this uh, this company, to say the what, least. One of my favorite moments that shows Winter's leadership is after the the raid of the crossroads. They have some prisoners. I think they've got like a dozen prisoners, yeah. and um and Liebgott, who is just he, he's been hit. He's got a wound in his neck. He's still firing even though the battle's over. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Just, just pissed off, and and Winters as is like, all right, he needs to come off the line. He needs to go back. So take the prisoners back. And he's like, oh, oh my pleasure. And he <laughs> has that moment where he goes, okay, I'm gonna take away all but one bullet. And you have one bullet, and there are twelve of them. If you decide to take one of them out, they will take you out. They all make it back alive <laughs> because he knew in that state of mind he was not going to bring them all back alive. And it's just oh, another great moment of understanding his men, understanding where they're at, who they are, where their mind is at, and knowing what to do. It's crazy because he he clearly is stuff. Um, there is more to. He's not as calm, cool, and collected. Uh, I think at times, but uh, he's also focused in taking care of his people because he might be caught up in that those moments, like we said, with where he's suffering PTSD later on in the episode. But he is still. A, more aware of the people around him that he needs to be a better example and uh, kind of look at his audience type of thing and know how to uh, uh, what best uh, kind of guide them. And so it's exactly like taking those bullets away is the perfect way of, <laughs> I know what you're trying to do, but you're not going to do it type of thing. I need you to go do this now the mm -hmm. right way, not the way you want to do it. And uh, that's why winners is such like one of the most admiral characters probably in, uh, you know, uh, many, many series history because of just his character is amazing. And Damien Lewis, once again, I, I, I kind of, it's like a broken record on, nowadays. We've already five episodes in and we're talking about Damien Lewis is the MVP probably of this whole, uh, this show because his performance is fantastic. And, uh, and I, I, I know Damien Lewis from other things that I haven't watched, but I, I know that he's a very popular or, you know, semi, uh, you know, popular actor but man this, i will always think of uh, winners from from now on whenever i see him because it's just especially this episode was the best turn as winters i feel because you saw a lot more to his mental psyche as well which is i appreciate having watched this series and going through stuff like this it made me want to see everything else damian lewis did like i started oh, yeah. watching okay. homeland because damian lewis was in it i i watched he had another show called life that came out mm. uh, a few years before that. It was just a procedural cop show that I watched because Damian Lewis was in it. And he's awesome in everything he does. I haven't got a chance to watch Billions yet, but I want to see it. I even want to see that that stupid looking dream horse movie uh, where the town buys a horse <laughs> because he's in it. 
I mean, it's like, oh, this kind of looks by the numbers. Oh, but Damian Lewis is in it. I'm there for it just because he he showed so much in this series and showed and he's a brilliant actor in whatever yeah, he yeah. does. Absolutely. Um, so I, I I love the scenes where he's in his he's in his uh his new office too. Yeah, and and he's te- and and the interactions with Nick's are always great, and they get better now that he is. Uh, he's back and more of in the uh, administration of the of what's going on instead of on the on the front, and uh, I, I just have to say, honestly, we should be eating eating bacon sandwiches right now, um, because uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you see any bacon sandwiches, let me know. Yeah, it, it, it's a that that's a great one. That's a great one. Um, another great line from Nix, and it's a it it's kind of a very nuanced line. And really just goes to how how you think about war. So Winners has this final battle that he where he's leading Easy Company. He goes through it all and and you see everyone that is that's taken out, everyone that's killed, and, and they're they're dealing with afterwards. It's like, okay, you did this. And um it's like, well, did did you lose anybody? And and Winner says, We lost Dukeman. And and he goes, and Nix goes, there's like half a battalion of German soldiers out there. That's not bad for Dukeman. And <laughs> it, it, it's, and it, it's one of those moments where you realize that, yeah, these, these are people and you know, these people, but war is really just a game. It's like, Oh, that for this, not a bad trade off. I, and yeah. it, it just shows that this, this is all just more of a game than, than anything. Yeah, it's like slowly moving pieces here, attack here, move, uh, re- move here, move here. It's, it's like a strategic game that, uh, unfortunately, instead of pieces on a board like a game of Risk or chess or something, it's actually people. So mm-hmm. you kind of have you. It takes. I don't know how I would be in that situation. You know, cause I'm, I you know haven't served or anything like that, but I don't know. I would. I don't know. Eventually, at one some point, you, you kind of have to look at it in a different perspective. And it, it but at for me, it would be kind of tough seeing like, well, I, this one guy died that I know, and I, but I got all these people. It would still be hard to lose the people, of course. I would think. Yeah. But just kind of, it's interesting. They've been there for so long and doing these, uh, seeing some of the most horrific sights, probably, and hearing things and losing people they are close to. So like, eventually, they kind of have to shut off their brain. I would imagine. Um, for their losses at times. So it is kind of, they have to look at it as a game for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for an episode, I feel like this episode, there's not a lot going on, but for this episode, there's a lot going on. (laughs) Cause so you, cause you have this, this insanely detailed telling of what happens Mm -hmm. at the crossroads. And then you have operation Pegasus where Moose Heiliger Mm -hmm. leads easy company on their first, uh, their first thing with him where they go and rescue these 140 soldiers that were trapped behind enemy lines from uh, market garden, market garden failing. And they have to bring them back and it's a rounding success. Then you have the side plot of Heiliger getting shot. And one thing that I noticed that really struck me from that scene, it, it's such a rant. It's such just a little, that little moment where a patrolman just, doesn't notice what who's in front of him and shoots. He shoots Moose, but Winters is right there. And it's just, it's amazing. It just, if the bullet had hit the wrong one, just think of how much different everything would have been. Um, be a crippling effect, I would think. Absolutely. And, and then, and then there's a the whole morphine debacle, not knowing how much morphine they gave him, how they might have killed him just by the morphine. And um, and you see a little bit of Doc Rowe getting mad at them, who we'll talk a lot about in the next episode, um, because he comes up a lot there. So then the the end of this episode is preparing for the next step. What's going to happen next? And that's why it's mm-hmm. kind of this crossroads is, is everything's kind of in transition. They're moving from Market Garden into something else. They're, they have transition in leadership. The, the easy company is at a crossroads, and uh, and we find out that their next thing is to enter what becomes the Battle of the Bulge, 
and and the the one of the quintessential moments in World War II, one of the most talked about, most studied battles of the whole thing. Once again, Easy Company is going to be at the center of, <laughs> not only at the center of it, but with Lieutenant Dyke leading, who is is completely useless, and you're already starting to get a sense of that. Uh, you have some guys returning. You've got Garnier who broke out of uh, broke out of the hospital, and I, I love his little. Um, Anybody ever hear of a place called Lulu's? Yeah, I'll ask around. <laughs> I want to know what Lulu's is. I, I really do. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, that line. I, it's like, I wonder what that swarmer place is from like Avengers. Like this, <laughs> yeah. like this, it makes you curious. What the heck is that? You know, that's exactly right. What's, what's yeah, Lulu's? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Buck is back after getting shot during Market Garden, but you mm. get a sense that he's not the same. Like he's he's a little shook um and you get that in in the movie scene which is another great scene the one and only george Lez. got the penny I, <laughs> i've seen this movie like a thousand times so there you go. <laughs> that's a that's another a, another great great moment there but uh you end up having this the the end of this episode is this march mm-hmm. into into the battle and it's it's such an amazing moment as you're seeing them march into the battlefield as you're seeing everybody else retreating from it and yeah, how bloodied was... and just battered they are yeah i i hate to do this again but like saving private ryan kind of came through my head on that one mm-hmm. um when they're looking for ryan and all that when they see Gary, like that scene where they're looking at the dog tags in front of the soldiers coming out of battle, and then they see Gary Bertier right there, <laughs> the guy who plays Gary Bertier in <laughs> Remember the yeah. Titans. Uh, yeah, so they're doing like uh, that kind James of like, Francis Ryan. James <laughs> Francis. Yeah, James- ah, from uh, yeah, but yeah, so they're seeing him, and uh, that it kind of reminded me of that they're kind of like in passing each other when they're coming out, they're going back towards the uh, where they just came from. It, it kind of is fair- some similarities once again between the two shows but yeah that scene was was crazy like everybody was leaving and they're just like you guys are where are you guys going and mm-hmm. easy company's like we're going we're going headstrong into this so going headstrong into it without yeah. the supplies they need oh, yeah. um they, they're they don't have jimmy any... fallon shows up in this yeah i forgot this the, yeah jimmy fallon yeah that's why i was getting <laughs> i mean he he's yeah. the guy who's who's trying to bring as many of the, the supplies that are left over from what just happened out and yeah, that that yeah. might be the one moment that takes you out of what's going on more than any other moment. Yeah, and, and even at this point, Jimmy Fallon is a known commodity. Like he is on SNL at this point in two thousand one, and and you look over and it's like, wait, Jimmy Fallon? What is he doing here? And nobody else that that you run across in this it takes you out of the moment more than Jimmy Fallon showing up right there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they're they're ill equipped. They don't have they don't have ammo. They don't have cold gear, the w- winter weather gear or anything like that. And another moment that shows that perfect foil of of Winters and Dyke. And really, it's one of the only times that Winters and Dyke interact. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's true. He is uh, he Dyke is so worried about other people not doing their job that he doesn't do his job. Like, and, and, and I've known people like this that are so worried about what everybody else is doing that they don't do what they're supposed to do. Because like he comes up to winners and he goes, uh, the, can you believe that so-and-so is at a wedding? We are about to go to the front, to the front, and we don't have our CO? What is going on here? And winners like, uh, yeah, and your men don't have ammo, and your men don't have winter supplies, and your men don't have this, your men don't have this. So why don't you worry about your job and not what someone else is supposed to be doing? He goes, I'm on it. I'm on it. You, you, you go take care of it. See, I did it. I'm done. And so <laughs> it's like, my job is to delegate. It's like, he doesn't He's realize the worst delegator ever. <laughs> he doesn't realize how insignificant he is. I think that's really what it's at. He thinks he's already like a major or a general. And all he that's has to do is the behind the scenes stuff and tell everybody else what to do. He doesn't realize he's not there yet. He's, he's the commander of a company. He is supposed to be leading the way. He's supposed to be doing what Winters wants to do. And Dyke wants to be doing what Winters is supposed to be doing. 
And uh, but he's kind of lousy at both. Like we, we mentioned a few yeah. episodes ago, the the L, like the worst soldier of all time is Blythe. The worst soldier yeah. of all time might be Lieutenant Dyke. And oh, we'll get more into yeah. that later. But you you get you get just the first taste of him here for sure. Yeah. Don't want to talk too much about about him because there's a lot more to unpack with him. But there is a lot still, more coming up. Yeah, there he's definitely the one of the worst delegators. And he's the guy he's the guy that he gets he, once he gets the title, he's like, Oh, okay, cool. I'm gonna sit back and uh I got I have a title now and uh I'm good to go. I'm the I am the shit, as it were, because I have this yeah. title now. <laughs> Sorry yeah, to drop yeah, that, but yeah. yeah, that's basically what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh and yeah, so when Jimmy Fallon shows up, I don't even remember if he actually has a name, but it's Jimmy Fallon. And tells them, you know, they're going to be closing in. You're going to be surrounded because that's the whole thing with Battle of the Bulge is you had a true um, a group of soldiers that were surrounded and then um, and and they were trying to take care of it. And I love the line. It said so matter of factly. And it's like either you are the smartest person alive or the craziest person alive. When Winter says we're paratroopers, we're supposed to be surrounded. (laughs) It's like just so calm and cool. Collect is like this is what we're trained to do. That's why you guys couldn't do it we have to yeah yeah exactly and just the damien lewis uh or winner's uh matter of factness to him yeah, this is a good good line there too it's, that's what we got to do it in any other uh any other moments any other scenes that uh that stood out to you i just i i actually really beginning half of it when he's recounting all the story i think that that changing up the style of it a little bit is um was really kind of refreshing in a sense going back and looking back at somebody retelling stuff and you having those moments in that in present time or their present time with winners inside his office type of thing. I think that was really cool. Um, yeah. The only negative really is that they get taken out with Jimmy Fallon a little bit. I, I get it. It's such a small scene, but you can clearly get taken out of it because you're like, Oh, I know that guy. And it's not from, you know, not because he's covered in like, dirt and grime and stuff like that. No, it's, it's clearly Jimmy Fallon with that accent and everything. Uh, but I think this is actually one of the, one of the episodes I really kind of, I enjoy a lot. And I think mm. I, I want, I kind of want to say, I wish Tom Hanks would have maybe done another episode or something like that too. So just because maybe his direction was kind of there, but yeah, I, I enjoyed this episode quite a bit. Actually. I think it's actually out of all the ones that we have talked about so far. It's, it's, it's one of the more ones that I'm kind of interested to watch because nothing really happens, but a lot of does happen, like you were saying. And I kind of want to rewatch, try to get more information because I know I missed stuff. I know I missed a bunch of stuff in these episodes because this was, again, my first time. So right, right. I, I, a rewatch probably would be necessary just so you, I can pick up the bits and pieces of it. You get so much more this the second, third, fourth time going through the, the mm-hmm. series. Uh, I will say... This episode is one of my least favorite. Uh, okay. So I, it's interesting that you that you love this one, but yeah, it's one of my least favorite, and it's not necessarily for the storytelling, but in the way it tells like that crossroads uh, fight, it's kind of hard to follow exactly what's going on. Oh, no. um, yeah, and there is and that, yeah. it's a little confusing, and especially when it's making like a point of here's all the. Uh, here's here's you know all the detail i'm putting into this report and now you can't really tell what i'm what i'm talking about uh it's not not really great storytelling at that at that point um Mm -hmm. and it and because of that it does get slow like i said this feels like a really long episode because it spends so much time telling that and then it's like oh yeah and then this happens oh yeah and then this happens and so it kind of jumps around a lot even though it gives so much detail to a certain part of it um so for a lot of those reasons, and it's weird, Tom Hanks as a director is really hit or miss. Mm. I love I love that thing you do, which was his first directed movie. I never saw Larry Crown, but it was supposed to be horrible. Another one of my favorite uh, miniseries is From the Earth to the Moon, which talks, uh, which is kind of the same thing that uh, Tom Hanks did here. He followed up Saving Private Ryan with Band of Brothers. He followed up Apollo 13 with From the Earth to the Moon which takes you basically through the whole manned space program from uh, from Mercury to the end of the Apollo program when they made their last landing on the moon. And he he directed my least favorite episode there, too. So, oh, wow. it, it, yeah, it's kind of interesting that he is 
is kind of front and, and it's it was another one where the storytelling changed and the format changed and he was the one telling it. so i don't know if it's something he likes to direct the different ones or what but mm. yeah i it's something that always kind of stood out to me uh, a few I more think, things oh go ahead go ahead no 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 i, I think that that is it's very interesting that it's is, is this currently your least favorite episode of the the five of the five we've done so far i'd say probably yeah Oh wow! Okay, even over under blight. Yeah, I think so. I think I would say it's it's under that one. It's better. Oh, I. You glitched out there. Are you there? Second. I'm here. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. There we go. I think we're good now. Okay. I think it's uh, kind of middle of the. I don't think it's better than the replacements, but I just it's just something resonated with me in this one, so I I enjoyed it. So. I think it's it's not the, the best one for me. It's kind of like right just top upper half of the five that we watched. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. All right. A few more little details I, I want to mention before uh, before we wrap this up. Um, Trigger is a great name for a dog. I, I just Good thought that, that that was just an awesome little little thing in there. Uh, I love the little moment when um, when Webster gets hit. And and he goes, they got me. And then later on, when he's getting stretched off, he goes, "Can you believe that? I said they got me. Really? That's what I said." <laughs> I mean, he, he's he's the educated one that that uh, that kind of prides himself in in being that. And when he gets hit, he says the most cliche thing possible. And uh, the last thing I want to mention is uh, one one part of this episode we didn't mention yet is. Uh, Winters gets a 48 hour leave in Paris and how uncomfortable he is taking time off. I find fascinating. That's yeah. That's, that's that is pretty interesting. Actually. It, it just shows how, how good he is at, at what he does. All right. Well, uh, with that, we will uh, go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be back at you very soon with a deep dive of another Band of Brothers episode. Until then, enjoy. <laughs>